Well, hello from the NEC Classic Motor Show, where I've managed to find a red and white 2CV. Um, we're now going to have a quick run around in high definition. So if you watch the live report, this should be a bit better. Let's get started. Hall 5 tends to be my favourite. Uh, look at this gorgeous Vauxhall Velox. Or it might be a Cresta. I think it is a Cresta. Cresta is the posh one. Quite early. It's got the three-piece rear window. Very much miniature Americana. Um, of course, Vauxhall owned by General Motors. So they really did go to town with the American-esque styling. We've got FD Victors here. They're very attractive cars. Big fan of the FDs. Uh, we've got Vivas variously. Oh, this one apparently has a V8 in it. That's quite exciting. Little HA Viva here. Very nice. HA pickup. That is very smart. And we've got Opal GTs. I adore these. Designed by Wayne Cherry, um, American designer, I think. Worked for General Motors. So um, that's why there's a hint of Corvette about these little baby um, muscle cars. But you could actually get them with a 1.1 litre engine. Most had the 1.9 cam in head engine. We've got later Mantas. Should surely have some um, headlamp wiper action going on. No, denied. That's terrible. Uh, Cavalier convertible. Rather tasty little Nova. And Calibra. Aha, this um, Cinquecento came all the way over from Northern Ireland belongs to my mate Jim. Um, he's driving a Fiat Tempra across America, but because the Tempra's already in America, he's bought his Cinquecento instead. So Fiat Motor Club, always put on a nice display. We've got a Seicento as well. Uh, we've got Skodas behind me. And oh my gosh, seriously, oh. No, no, wow, there, there, there's always a blue Skoda here and I don't like it very much and uh, just a personal thing. And it's not here, I'm, that pleases me immensely. Look at these beauties, absolutely marvelous. Uh, 1000 MB as well. We've got uh, the um, IFA Club, fine display of vehicles. Hello, sir, how are you doing? You're right. Yeah, uh, Barkus, very nice. The Barkus owner has been tweeting me, so I must try and meet him a bit later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, Wartburg 311, I think, and a 353 with a 1.3. It's got a Volkswagen engine, uh, 1.3 litre, and the world's most fragile gearbox. Completely bespoke to the car. Uh, I don't really get old Fords, but I must admit, um, a Mark 1 Escort in purple is a complete highlight. Uh, we've got many Zastavas here. That's good to see. You go, go, go. Very pretty. So um, their, their own uh, hatchback. Oh, we'll wait for that to finish. Oh, there you go. I can't compete with that noise. Uh, Lantium Motor Club. Very, very. Oh, shut up. Oh, let's try, try again. This looks. Um, what is this? It's a Lantia Appia. Um, that came after the Aprilia. Uh, I don't think I've got an Aprilia here. Um, very, very funky stuff. Look at those rear lights. They're um, tray unusual but perhaps not quite as unusual as the Lancia Gamma. Look at that. Uh, I met this Gamma um, a good few years ago. Um, it was sold brand new. No, no, it wasn't sold. That was the thing. I think the gearbox was taken out of it when it was brand new. So I think this has got less than 100 miles. Yeah, 89 miles from new. Um, yeah, so the, the, the gearbox was replaced to go in um, another car. How, how very Lancia. So that's the Berlin, and this is the coupe. And people go nuts about the coupe and how pretty it is, but my money's on the Berlins. So I think they're fantastic. If we come round the back, the styling is very dramatic indeed. 
How can you not love that? And I've got two of them. You'll note there's actually a window in there. So you actually get a bit more rear view through the louvers. That's just wonderful, wonderful stuff. And uh, we've got a beater here. Uh, I didn't know beaters came with rear wipers, but they do. We've got a Dedra, also with a rear wiper. Oh, I'm in heaven, absolute heaven. And then the Renault Owners Club have got a nice display on as well. A uh, little 4CV, gorgeous little car. Renault 5 Gordini. Um, we've got the Renault Espace. That is a wonderful thing to see here. I, I absolutely love these. I thought the styling was fantastic. And the first really popular people carrier in Europe, I'd say. I mean, there was a Fiat Multipler, there's various other contenders, but they're not quite those, are they? And over the other side, we've got the Renault Classic Car Club. Uh, also a, a fine display of vehicles. Uh, Caravelle here, Renault 12 Gordini, little Alpine one, A110s, fantastic cars. Uh, another Renault 12 Gordini. Might have to nick some parts from that for my Dacia. <laughs> he wasn't very impressed. And another gorgeous little 4CV. Uh, Simcas. Um, doesn't look like we've got any 1300s here, but I will keep on looking. Um, that's a very tasty Horizon. A Simca Around. And wow, it's a Dodge Omni. So American viewers will appreciate that. This is the European flavor of Horizon. And the Dodge Omni is the American version. Wow. Yeah, the seats are definitely American, I'd say. Look at that. Still got the service manual. Automatic. Wonderful. Good morning. Hi, yeah, very well. All the better for seeing this here. Uh -huh, yes. <laughs> Lovely. Which engine's this one got? 1700. 1700. It's a rabbit engine. Yeah. So yeah, Volkswagen engine to um, ensure maximum um, sailability um, in the uh, in America. Uh, Citroen SM, which is why I'm getting horribly distracted and uh, BX16 valve next to it. So that can only be the Citroen Car Club. Very fine DS here. CX as well, very nice. And you've got to have an H fan, haven't you? Oh, look what Peugeot I've got. Oh, we'll go and have a nose at those in a minute. First of all, we've got the Citroen Traction Advance. Try it a bit higher. Next to Ford Mustangs, obviously. And uh, some American bustle as well. Gosh, is that a Plymouth? That's um, enormous. But 70 years of the 2CV being marked with um, a fine selection here. So um, let's take you through the 2CVs we've got. Um, two Maharis. Um, then we've got Ripple Bonnet French built 2CV. Um, ooh, hello. That's a very late 2CV on a H plate. Uh, might be the last right-hand drive one built. It's certainly from the last batch. That's very nice. Good morning. Uh, that's my mate John Sobey's beautifully restored slough-built British-made 2CV. They didn't sell many of those. And then we got um, another pair of Maharis because it's the Mahari anniversary as well. Uh, 50 years of the Mahari. Uh, first called the Diane 6 Mahari. Uh, which tells you all you need to know about the running gear. It is pure Citroen Diane. And um, yeah, the French equivalent of the Mini Moak. But um, I must get back to those Peugeots. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. What a colour. Marvellous. We've got some nice Marcuses over there. If that's the plural of Marcus, I'm not sure. Let's have a look around these Peugeot. We've got a lovely 205 GT there and um, a 202. Peugeot was very inspired by the Chrysler Airflow at one stage and uh, that's a pre-war design. And um, that's a pre-war design with a bit more of a modern take on it. That's certainly different. Blimey. Serious amount of work in that. 
yet I'm probably still more drawn to the brown 504 here. That is very nice. Right, we better have a run along the microcars. So BMW resetters. I wonder how many of these were at the rally we went to. <laughs> All displaying their innards. Wonderful. Uh, little Barkley there. Uh, Gogo Mobile. Do love a Gogo. I'm not even sure what that is, but it's quite little. Oh, a Bond. Ah, lorry Bond into his races as well. We've got uh, Messerschmitt Tiger TG500. Uh, Peel Trident. That is, really is a bubble car. And then we've got the Heinkels on the end here. If you want demonstration of contrast, I think this might be one of the best places to get it because you've got microcars one side and very Larry looking uh, Dodge Chargers the other. Yeah, that's probably more cubic inches in that one engine than in that entire row. Yeah. Right, well, I've seen friskies, so let's go and get a bit frisky. Look at that. That's quite nice. That's quite um, ugly in a lovable way. A VW Thing, type 131 of those. Fins, serious fins. And then we're back into Peugeot's again. And, uh, oh, it's nice to see some Midas's here, mini-based kit cars. Uh, kind of an extension of the Mini Marcus, but really, I'm all about the Friskies. Funky, funky little cars. Designed by Giovanni Michelotti, and they appear in every one of my NEC reports because I think they're utterly fantastic. Right, we seem to have run out of cars and it's all turned a bit woody. So I think we shall say, that is it for our run around Hall 5. Disappointing lack of larders. Can't go through Hall 5 without talking about mattress. How did I miss this stunning green morena? That is um, a thing of absolute beauty. Uh, if you haven't seen my video test drive on Matra Morena, uh, you really must. It sounds absolutely awesome. And then we've got a Matra Rancho. I've never driven a Matra Rancho. Um, I would very much like to. It's a later one being Talbot badged. And um, yeah, it's um, a Simca 1300, but with a glass fibre pod bonded onto the back to create something of an SUV. This one's even got rear head restraints. Always like the upside down rear wiper. Marvellous. And then we've got a Bagheera. The Bagheera came before the Morena. And um, yeah, the construction of these is slightly problematic because it's a steel chassis with a plastic body bonded to it. And the chassis rots and then you can't get the body off to restore them. Bit of a pain. Uh, when they move to the Morena, it's a galvanised chassis. Right then. Time to see what else is about. There's one very colourful Figaro. Uh, it's got um, West Ham United seats. That's personalisation taken to the extreme. Uh, we've got Mitsubishi 3000 GTs and GTOs over here. And uh, Triumph 2000. These are very rare. I think that one be belongs to Jane, who I know on Facebook and have never actually managed to meet yet. Uh, probably one of the rarest, most exclusive cars here. And it's just sitting there with a Toyota Starlet in the background. So, oh, go on in. Yeah, we'll have a look. This is Harvey of the Toyota Enthusiast Club. Hello. Hello. <laughs> look at the wiper detail. Extraordinary. So, yeah. There you go. Have a peek inside a Toyota 2000 GT. Well, it is Jane's car, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. One of the most expensive cars on site today. Yeah. Great to see it again. I don't even know what engine these have got, so this is going to be an education even for me. I'm guessing it's a two litre. Two litre, six cylinder. Ah. Just like that, the yeah, it's the same block as the Toyota Crown. Oh wow, well we'll go and have a look at the Crown and the Starlet right now. Yes, go on. Very nice um, Celica there as well. Good morning all. Good morning. Look at that, look at those stripes. 
That is a lovely, lovely car. But then so is this. Look, Japan was doing styling in the 70s like no one else. It's a shame this is such a dark part of the hall. That is absolutely incredible. All right, other powerful cars. We've got the Toyota Supra Mark IVs here. Uh, very nice. Sequential turbos, very nice. And opposite those, we've got Ford Transits, because why wouldn't you? And then we've got 300 ZXs. Uh, that's a car we drove for Retro Japanese magazine. Owner Joel busy polishing it. Stunning, stunning car. And looking all the better with a yellow one next to it for a bit of contrast. And then blue. And then we've got Fair Ladies. How many Fair Ladies have we seen this year? I think that's probably the third one. There were two at the Goodwood breakfast meet. That's a classic Z register stand. There we go, look under the bonnet. Right, we've got Ford Capris over here. We've got um, Zodiacs, uh, Mark 1s and Mark 2s. It's getting very really difficult. This is just one hall. Look, we've got MR 2s over here, uh, crammed away. And uh, yeah, 300 Cs. And that's a Nissan President there, by the look of it. Sporting Bears is um, a charity where you can donate money uh, to their great causes and um, have a passenger ride in a nice car. And we've got a Ferrari 308 GT4 just there, Lotus Exige, I can see E-Type Jaguars, Porsche 911s, but look, a Tobacco Leaf Rover P6. Oh, the stuff of dreams. Marvellous. Right, we've got um, a bit of a gasser van stance going on there and some Ford Fiestas. But I think I'm going to have to say that's it for this haul because I'm just struggling to get around it all. We'll just have a look at Is that a Fiesta Firefly? That is um, quite smart. I used to have a Mark II Fiesta. It was my first car, so yeah. That's bringing back some memories. Beautiful. All right, let's continue on around the show. So the halls here I encircle this central area. So this is where people are queuing up for hideously overpriced food and beer and all that sort of thing. So I'm just cutting across from hall five to hall one, because hall one is where Tuck the Invercar is. Uh, but yeah, it's getting busy already. And this is Friday. Friday's the quieter day, historically. So um, yeah, it's gonna be quite a day, I think. I don't think I'm gonna be moving very far from the stand. I'm um, giving an awful lot of talking about a, a ridiculous little Invercar. Oh, good grief. Um, right, this may have been a bad call, so I've now got to try and make my way through that lot and get in. Oh dear. Surely all these people haven't come to see just an Invercar. Yeah, so here we go, it's um, getting busy already, and it's um, six minutes since the doors opened. Uh, this is gonna be quite a day, and already I can't get back to my stand. But um, top tip, I just came in through door two. So we saw the crowd at hall one. Don't start at hall one, just because it's the first hall. Um, walk up the back and start in hall two or three. Makes a lot more sense. So this is hall one, and this is Tuck's home for this weekend and she's in some very fine company indeed. Uh, we're going to have a look at the Fiat 850 Coupe again because we had a low res look at that on the live feed but look at this little beauty. Definitely one of my favourites of the show. Gorgeous, gorgeous little car and the engines in these kind of lived on until the 1990s. Uh, I think the Cinquecento was the last car to use um, part of this car's um, running history, effectively. That's gorgeous. Bertone styling. And why shouldn't you have a, a car styled by Bertone just because you're a bit, um, well, not poor, what's the word? Yeah, it's a poor man's um, Porsche, maybe. But um, there are Porsches available of proper types there. Let's play guess the car. 
pass. Uh, there's a 300 SL gull wing, it's rather nice. Look, they've got a photo of it, just in case you can't be bothered to walk around there and look at the actual car. Don't quite understand what that's about. We've got the AC, but who's that over there? I see, took the Invercar. And here she is on the Classics World stand, along with the Subaru Impreza, where we took to the Netherlands, uh, and a little Mini. Both those cars have been given away. Someone hasn't unplugged their battery, and you're meant to do that. But yes, Tuck is here, opposite a Porsche 911 in Rally Spec. And the Aston Martin works. So, um, yeah, you get free magazines for a quid, so it's all good. But yeah, this is my home, I better get started. Oh, it's a pair of gorgeous Gilburns. Um, both Invaders, I think, that's the later facelift yeah, yeah. Invader. And what a colour. That is astonishing, I don't think that's standard. Uh, we've got Pipers here. Pipers, a remarkable low-slung car. I remember seeing one of those on the M25. And uh, we've got Turners. I may have seen that Turner before, I have a feeling. What I'm trying to find is the Princesses. Um, you want for a p -p 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 pink Porsche? But no, that's not what we're looking for at all, is it? I don't think we're after the auctions either. Yeah. Oh, nice Rolls Royce for the old... Um, I don't think we're allowed to call them Chinese eye headlamps anymore, but that's what they called them back in the day. Uh, not very PC in those days. Dino GT, that's quite nice. Whale tails galore. There's a Jensen uh, estate over there. GT, that's quite stylish. Yuck. Um, big wings, big wings, big wings. Ginetta G15. Oh, I like the Ginetta G15. Um, overpriced escorts, uh, American things. Where are the prinnies? Let's go see if we can find some prinnies down here. Oh, Jaguar Enthusiast Club stand. We'll go and have a look around here because uh, we've got the Broad Sport XJ12 Coupe. That's quite nice. Uh, XK150 and And uh, this, this is the oldest XJ. Um, and that, that's Nick Larkin, a less spotted Nick Larkin. Hey, hello! He's very busy. Classic Car Weekly worked very hard at this show. Um, so yeah, this is the oldest XJ. I drove this recently um, for a feature in Classic Jaguar. Uh, it's a 2.8 and it featured in a lot of magazines at the time, but it's actually a pre-production car. And a very interesting motor car indeed. Uh, I like it a lot, it was quite nice to drive. And I, I, can, I can see Rob, but he's getting the bonnet up on the Broad Sport XJ. So let's have a peek inside. How luxurious is it? Uh, not very. Look at that. And that is quite the engine. Blimey, I've never seen under the bonnet of this car before. That is quite remarkable. Now, you never know quite what to expect at this show, but um, Jaguar aficionados will recognize those cam covers. It is a Jaguar XK engine, but it's been converted to a four-cylinder format. It uh, uses pistons from a Vincent Black Knight motorbike. It's two huge carburetors, and the crankshaft is from a Ford 1500. It's quite insane, and it was used in um, very modified saloon production racing. That is an extraordinary motor car. What blokes get up to in sheds, eh? Well, I haven't found the princesses yet, but check out that for a colour. Avocado Morris 2200 next to a Wolseley with the illuminated grill badge. Uh, lovely selection of land crabs. I really regret not owning a land crab. Uh, that was an error on my part, I just missed out. Um, we've also got the Panthers, 
Uh, so this was following me in yesterday. Quite extraordinary. Oh, look, we got Theresa May there. Boo! Oh, that's politics. Don't go there. Um, I quite like that one. That's a nice colour. Um, Morris J. Vans. Beautiful, beautiful things. So much character. The old frutney bit. Marvellous. Right, let's try down here instead. Well, that's certainly a different Morris Meyer. I think I prefer the green one overall. Um, Austin 10s, Austin 10 pickup, that's quite unusual. And now we're down to see some of the cars I saw in the live report. Um, so we've got um, the Nash Metropolitans, we've got a gorgeous little peanut, the Austin A30. Uh, tell those by the smaller rear windows. Austin A40 Countryman, was it the first hatchback? There's a point for discussion. One of the racing A35s. Gorgeous little ute. And uh, I didn't focus enough on the metros earlier. So uh, there's J.R. Ewing is um, celebrating the launch of the metro. And obviously the best one here is this early one. I thought we may have seen this before. Gorgeous raised digit number plates, gorgeous seat covers. It's going to be very poverty spec, but it has got a rear wiper. That's a Mini Metro L. I had a Mini Metro HLS. Mine was the sporty one. Uh, I do like the MG Metros as well. And uh, MG is replaced by the Metro GTI with the um, K-Series engine. And look at some marinas. And Mr. Docker Trigger is with his marina estate. Busy engaging members of the public in discussions. Hello, sir. Hey, yeah. So there you go, that is Mr. Docker Trigger, and this is his gorgeous, gorgeous marina. Look, he spends all his time polishing that engine. Marvellous. So, do they look better in high def than when we saw them earlier? And isn't that still one of the best Montegos you've ever seen? Right, that's going to be it for today. Um, tomorrow we'll go and look around some other halls and see if we can find those elusive princesses. Well, welcome to day two. Um, that's my hotel over there, very grateful to Kelsey Media. So we are, not that, not that we can see because there is no windscreen wiper. Nonetheless, let day two begin. All right, welcome to day two at the NEC Classic Motor Show. And uh, I thought I would start off by checking out a row of seriously hot Lamborghinis. Look at these babies. Yeah, that's my kind of Lambo. And this one's been signed by someone. We have a Polish stand, Fiat 126P and uh, a Zook. Um, they seem to do a, a good job of mostly hiding their Zook. But I'm gonna go along here because I'm pretty sure this is hall free. And hopefully we can find the Leyland princesses, having utterly failed to find them yesterday. In fact, we'll, we'll just have a quick swing by Lobster Diecast just to see what Lobster has got for it. Oh, look at this. Look at that. That is a very, very nice little daff. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Right. Let's just take in the absolute beauty of the Gordon Keebles. I think I do this every year, but that's because the Gordon Keeble is one of my favourite uh, Italian cars. Italian? No, British. Italian style, American V8 engine, Chevy small block. And um, yeah, 
a British car and a very beautiful one at that. And then we've got Bristol's next to them, which were always a bit odd looking, maybe in a good way. Uh, it's a Bristol fighter. I think they had Dodge Viper engines, from what I recall. Oh, that's quite a pretty little 4CV. Um, Aston Martin DB4. Uh, Zagato spec. And um, yeah, you don't, you don't want to know how much that was. Uh, Rolls Royce Silver Ghost over there in front of a Mark II Golf. That's a nice bit of variety. Uh, nice Daimler there, V8 250. Oh, two and a half litre. Selection from Aaron Cars, based down in Sussex. Hard work keeping them all shiny. Aha! I've seen my first glimpse of a princess, so we shall ignore these uh, cobra things. We shall just have a moment for some headlamp wiper goodness. And what on earth is that? I mean, that's clearly a mini power plant. Uh, an AF spider, apparently. Oh, that really does look like it's been lashed together in a shed, although clearly with some serious timber skills. Impressive. Oh, oh, the princesses are going to be good. You just admire the beauty of the Ford Thunderbird, which makes the MGB look rather tiny. But check out this beauty. Look at that, Reynard Metallic. That is just splendid. And the, the posh one is a 2200 HLS. This is the Leyland Princess Enthusiast Club, dedicated to the preservation of these marvelous cars. Did you know Swedish examples had headlamp wipers? Why didn't we all get that? Yeah, marvelous. Ah, there is Harris Mann. Harris Mann designed the Princess. Uh, some good information boards here, and there is Harris back in the day. That's how the princess should have looked. Um, maybe didn't quite end up quite so glamorous. But Harris has been around at the show, apparently. And, um, yeah, nice display boards. Well done, Leyland Princess folks. Right, we need to find some other cars with which to uh, do some looking. Hold on, is that a Volvo 240 police car? It is. Oh, that's, that's quite lovely. And they've got an S-Type Jaguar next to it. And a Volvo Amazon estate. And if you like Volvo Amazon estates, I've got good news. There's a road test on a Volvo Amazon estate coming soon to Hubnut. Uh, I was almost excited to see a P38 Range Rover, but it hasn't got headlamp wipers. What a shame. And, uh, oh, bit of a traffic jam going on up here. Uh, the dealers are moving their stock around. Right, I'm gonna explore elsewhere. I think I glossed over this car um, when I was running around yesterday. Uh, this is JWK651. I have a feeling I've done a feature on this car in Classic Jaguar magazine. Uh, I've never actually met it, I just used photos from elsewhere. But it's one of six X-Works um, XK120s, the most famous of which is Nub 120, which a lot of people know about Nub 120. It was used by Ian Appleyard to compete in many rallies. This one was entered for the Le Mans in 1950 and uh, Mini Melia in 1951. And um, I wish I could remember more of the details about that car. But uh, yeah, the asking price is POA, so you know it's gonna be a lot. Oh, shut up! Oh, very nice Dutch Rover 800 Fastback there. Uh, very nice Sterling. Lovely cars. And then we've got a later 800 here on the Rover 800 Owners Club stand. We've got a fine selection of Civitars and the Reliance Scimitar and Sabre Owners Club. And um, a goodly selection of Bond Bugs as well. And for P6 fans, Plenty going on here. Lots of polishing as well. And um, yeah, if you'd like your cars to look utterly ridiculous, good grief. 
not my cup of tea. I must admit, I'd rather have a TR7. Oh, a TR8, but it's got a slightly patinated hood. That's quite stylish as well. Uh, that was like a very early Triumph Herald. That's very nice. But I want to go down here because we've got um, a standard Atlas camper. That's amazing. Uh, look how inboard the track is on these things. Quite hilarious. Uh, standard Vanguard Estate. That's quite a lovely. And the Enzyme was the stripped out poverty version of the Vanguard. Very popular with the RAF. And um, yeah, quite strange that they often had bigger engines. We've got um, Reliance. This one has been a classic car weekly project car. Um, last year it was here, very rusty. Uh, very nice um, Robin, belonging to Oliver, I think, that one. Very nice. Morning, gents. Morning. And uh, ye oldie barn find, Rialto, look at that. Reduced for quick sale, I'll take it. Yeah. Ah, Hillman Aero Minxes. There's a speciality. Um, how's that for glazing? Marvellous. And then we've got some Singer Juniors over here. Look at this, that's amazing. Engine in the wheel. Ladies tricycle motor wheel. Wow. Uh, we've got Dolomites, GT6s, all good. Uh, Triumph Roadsters displaying their dicky seats. Renowned beyond with their razor edge coachwork. Uh, some being Alpines. and Tigers. And um, we've got Avengers as well, and um, Talbot Sunbeams, Lotus, boring. But look at this, Green Avenger Estate. Wow. Ah, and that is the Toyota Celica, but won 1994 Rally Portugal. Quite impressive. Right, we're going to explore a new hall. This is a new extended part of the show. Obviously, this is rally land. We've got a Saab 96 next to a Renault 8 Gordini, next to a Mark, to, Mark 1 Escort, sorry. MG Metro 6R4. Sierra Cosworth. And some Scooby-Doo's. Right, so this is clubs that I haven't generally uh, displayed at the show before. So we've got a Fiat Coupe Club. And these are fantastic cars. I, I really regret not buying one of these when they were cheap. And they're getting very collectible. And I adore that colour. I'd be happy with a 20 valve. I did once test drive one, but it was a bit crap. Uh, Chevette. No estates. Disappoint. Vauxhall Calibras. Quite a lot of Calibras here. Boston Classic Car Club, but they usually have a display here anyway. Oh, look at that, Montego Vandenplas, Vandenplat, whatever. VDP. Um, hmm, Volvo 262 and a very lengthy limo. Uh, I, I, bet, I bet Simon Browse will like that if he's watching. I know he's coming to the show tomorrow, I'll have to tell him to come and find that. We've got BMW Minis. These are some of the earliest examples from um, the first year of production. I think that one belongs to Matt Richardson, who does photography for me on various titles. Uh, caravans in here as well. Another ye oldie barn find. Oh, got a very nice Volvo P1800 there. There's more Volvo clubs than you can shake a stick at these days. Uh, very nice Granadas. I'm particularly liking this um, Mark 1 with the clear indicators. But then I'm also liking the Triumph Acclaim very much in beige. Stylish. Nice TR7 as well. This is the standard Triumph Forum. There's a Beetleback standard Vanguard over there by the look of it. Well named. 
Cosworths are plenty. A Fiat Strada, wow. That looks a bit of a beast. Um, I can't really get all that excited about single-seater race cars. Oh yes, I wanted to find these cars. Um, these are cars that competed in the, um, well they're all historic rally cars. But I particularly want to take an interest in this car here. Uh, this is one of six cars built by um, BMC to take part in the London-Sydney London Marathon. And um, I think that one was used by the RAF. And uh, yeah, one of six cars built, built by Basil Wales and his crew. This was the only white one, so most were red, as in those examples over there. Uh, only three of them survive from that rally, and this one is the most original. Wow. Possibly for sale. Um, yeah, hmm. I wonder how much a historic land crab costs you. But yeah, very interesting car. And the London Sydney Marathon is one of the toughest events. And um, I, that might be the Hillman Hunt of it, wouldn't it? Or it might be a replica. There's a very, very good replica. And um, I'm not sure I'm brave enough to try and tell you which it is. But um, the event was meant to be won by a Citroen DS, but it crashed on the very final stretch in Australia. And that's all a bit unfortunate. And um, crikey. This takes me back. I remember seeing vans like this around quite a lot when I was younger. Obligatory jacked up Bedford CF. Looks like it might have been a Mervy at some point. A little Thames van as well. Oh, there'll be some airbrushing happening live by the look of it. That's quite noisy. Aha, the Gay Classic Car Group. Uh, that is a very lovely VX going on there. And you always get a good display by the um, Gay Classic Car Group. I mean, that Renault 5's lovely, apart from the slight paint mismatch, or maybe it's just lighting in here. Look at Datsun 120Y. That is um, a delightful survivor. I mean, it'd be nicer if it was on some NAF wheel trims, obviously, but that's very nice. Another Reynard Metallic. Princess. If that's not the best colour for a car, frankly, I don't know what is. I mean, that's so nice, it's given me woodies, um, three of them. Oh, look at that, Humber Super Sniper State. I've always had a thing for the Super Sniper State. Um, that is very nice indeed. Beautiful. And uh, I had a complaint yesterday there weren't enough stags going on. So there you go, there's several for you, including one that's been questionably modified. It seems to try and look a bit like a Ford Mustang. I don't quite understand. Well, good morning from day three at the NEC and my voice is getting bassy indeed. Um, I seem to be turning into Barry White at quite a rate of knots. Um, but don't worry, I'm not going to sing. Um, there's a few like loose... Oh. Right, with that out of the way, and with a very colourful Capri in the background, let's get around the show. So I haven't been up this end of Hall 5 yet, but we've got um, Rover Tomcats here, um, Audi's there, that blue one is just stunning. What a gorgeous car. Um, also quite taken by this Capri. Very nice. And this um, Audi V8, they're quite rare. Not a big seller, because they're just a bit plain really it just looks like a, a 200 really but they are quite a lot larger i think they've got one of those full width rear tail light treatments going on oh yeah that is quite sexy um ah it's um 848 cry that is the italian job um e-type i believe um owned by philip porter and um yeah he, he's always promoting prostate cancer UK and um, as a survivor himself, yeah, right, rightly so. Um, he managed to get himself saved with an early diagnosis, so it just proves the importance of checking yourself out. And um, 
that is the end of this public information broadcast. But um, we've got a few more Volvos. It is a very early Volvo, look at that. That's quite lovely. Mind you, look how lovely this is. Look at the colour. Oh, that is a very 1970s only colour. I never got this bad boy. Wow. Lady Sandra. I'm not going to argue with Sandra if you don't mind me saying so. Volvo PV444. Another 164. Another fantastic 70s paint scheme. And a rather fetching ambulance up the back. Oh. Sorry, you can never walk past the DKW Owners Club. Uh, that's an auto union, and how they avoided a lawsuit from Ford, I'm not sure, because that is a baby Ford Thunderbird, and they're just absolutely fantastic. Three cylinder, two stroke engine, and um, yeah, pure Americana in miniature. And we've got DKW Thousand next to it, the Sonder class. Three equals six, they reckon, because it's three cylinder, two stroke. That's um, quite deliciously patinated, and um, that one isn't. And then we've got the van. I mean, it's like um, a predecessor of the Vivaro, is it not? Ah, Express steel panels have an Avenger on their stand as well. I do love Avenger estates. I just think they're they look fantastic. I mean, generally, I have a thing for estates. I am a wagon lover. That's very nice. Right, let's go and see what we can find along here. I don't think we've been along this bit before. Uh, there's your Plymouth Barracuda. Again, it could only be a 1970s colour. And oh, oh, hello. Cheeky pantograph wiper peeking out there. Wow. Right, next. Ah, yeah. rather meaty looking bug. Got mokes of plenty over here. I do like a mini moke. Look, would you like to build your own? Build your own moke. We've found the 200 and 400 owners club. So we've got um, a Rover Streetwise. And as time goes by, I think the Streetwise is a better and better looking car slightly jacked up stands covered in plastic this was years ahead of its time if they launched that car today it'd go down an absolute storm or the concept of that car at least uh, rover sd1s we have them in police and racing and road going forms and they're all utterly utterly delicious but yeah here we go rover 213 se so that's the honda engine and um, so after the Triumph Acclaim came the Rover SD3 200. And after that came the R8 200. Still being polished, doors aren't open yet. There's a 216 GSI in Henley Blue by the look of it. And uh, also Honda engine. Oh no, it's owned by Craig Cheatham. Oh well, it doesn't look too bad despite that. It, it'll be all right. Uh, no, Craig is a serial, serial Rover licker. And um, yeah, yeah, we got P4s on this side. Very, very nice. Do like the engineering. And um, around here we've got uh, this is the Rover P6 Club, and um, got one with mini lights over there. One very multicolored over here, and uh, a black um, three and a half liter. I think they were quite late. The black ones. But he V8 Oon. Interesting number plate. Not sure of the legality. Um, let's just check out some imps. Uh, Singer Chamois. Or, or I think it's a Chamois, was he? Is that what? Yeah, Chamois, Chamois Coupe. Also so, sold as the Sunbeam Stiletto and the Hillman Imp California. Uh, Singer Chamois Sport. And uh, as sick as I get of seeing Minna lights, uh, I think they work very nicely there. Uh, Hillman Husky. Uh, lovely estate and uh, there is your sunbeam stiletto very pleasant let's have a quick look around the um, Lancaster insurance pride of ownership stand these cars have all um, competed to be here and um, naturally they're all ridiculously shiny 
But that's okay. I, I know some people enjoy polishing their cars. I'm not one of them. But surely one of the most interesting cars is this Fiat 2300 Coupe. Uh, exceedingly rare. Exceedingly lovely. Uh, gear bodied? Yes, gear. Giveaway is the fact it's got a gear badge on the side. That is quite a clue. But um, absolutely astonishing. Oh, look at that. Original documentation. And it's still carrying the same number plate today. That's very, very special. A Maserati 3500 GT is quite special as well. You know, I'm, I'm not a Maserati man, but that is a beautiful, beautiful car. Also some beefy Mustang thing. Um, oh, hello, what have we got over here? Lancia Flavia? It is a Flavia, wow. That is a very pretty little car. Um, Flavia's had flat four engines, I think. I could well be wrong on that though. Don't quote me. Uh, let's go up here, we've got a very nice traction avant. It's a slow built, British built um, traction avant. Uh, I think, yes, born in 1948. I thought all the slow ones had the chevrons hidden behind the grill. This Daimler I did see as I came in, very rare drop head coupe. I think fiberglass rear body section. This was Daimler's attempt to rival the XK120. And um, I think it's a bit tragic really, isn't it? It's proof that styling is oh so important. And without it, you are not gonna get sales. And sadly, they did not sell very many. Uh, I've got a Datsun 510. This is the Bluebird of its era. Um, second maybe third generation bluebird and uh, done up as a bit of a rally replica uh, very nice cars very well engineered independent rear end overhead cam engines all quite unusual for the 1960s had the pleasure of driving one um, was it earlier this year i've lost track of my own life uh, i have no idea and then we've got a lotus elite over here i've only driven one of these once and it was in the snow and of course the best bit is pantograph wiper, mostly hidden. That was a turbo Esprit. Uh, we've got a Nissan Skyline R34 on the end, a Volkswagen thing. And um, has the BMW got headlamp wipers? No! Great disappoint. But I shall make up for it by looking at Jowett's. And I've never seen this before, a drop head coupe. Jowett Javelin. You can tell it's an early one. It's got the early, completely tiny headlamps. Uh, these also had flat four engines built in Bradford. And um, that is very pleasant. Uh, may have to go and find out more. So that's a Jupiter, which was the sports car version, also with the flat four engine. Um, I'll leave you looking at that one while I just check out the information here. Oh wow, it was built for the 1948 Earls Court Motor Show. And the coach work was by Carlton Carriage Co. So yeah, presumably a complete one-off. That is quite a find. And that's what's great about this show. You can come time and time again. There will always be something you haven't seen before. Uh, like a two-tone Riley Pathfinder. Oh no, sorry, 2.6, not the Pathfinder, my mistake. 2.6 is the one that's got a more BMC-esque body shared with uh, Wolseley, I believe. But frankly, I think that'll do. My voice is seriously, seriously suffering. I've got a day of being on the stand to look forward to. Mmm, brown. And um, yeah, there's still a long, long time to go. Oh, should we go and look at this thing? A Kellison. That's quite unusual. Something of a Jensen CV8 going on with it. Nose. There you go. Look up Kellison, and you can find out all you need to know about that. Right. Time to enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much for watching this look at um, all the lovely cars of the um, NEC Classic Motor Show 2018. Uh, don't forget to subscribe before you go, and I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Mmm, headlamp wiper. <laughs>